and passed the principles for the proposed National Teachers Bill 2022. Uh, principles are that when you are bringing a bill, you first bring principles, like a justification why the bill is required. And once cabinet passes the principles, then we authorize the minister to go ahead and draft the bill with the support from the first parliamentary council. So the Minister of Education and Sports presented the principles for a National Teachers Bill 2022, and we considered them and passed them. And the, the proposed law, which the ministry is drafting, among others, provides for regulation of the teaching profession. Number two, promotion, maintenance, and protection of ethical standards of the teaching profession, promotion of continuous professional development of members, provision for the career development of teachers within the teaching profession, as well as provision for the establishment of the National Teachers Council. I do not want the public to think that this law is being brought because teachers are having an industrial action. The two are different and not related. What this law is proposing is that we have a mechanism of regulating teaching as a profession because professions all over the world, including in Uganda, are regulated. For instance, when you look at the medical profession, we have various councils that do regulate the practice of medicine, like the Uganda Medical and Dental Practitioners Council. If a doctor, for instance, who is practicing medicine makes a mistake, you can seek redress from this council. We have the nurses and midwives professional council. We have the allied health professionals council and also the veterinary board for veter the veterinarians. We have the pharmacy board for the pharmacists. So these professions are usually regulated and the, the regulatory structures are a creature of legislation. So that's why the Ministry of Education is coming up with this law. Even engineers, they have an engineer's registration board which re regulates the practice and profession of engineering. Even lawyers, they have the law council. You know if, for instance, the practicing lawyer makes a mistake, the person aggrieved can appeal and petition the law council to discipline a lawyer. So, Education Ministry is also bringing a law to create that framework to regulate the teaching profession. So I want you to appreciate it from that context. And this follows the teacher's policy, which we passed in 2019 as cabinet. So you may say, where has education, where have they been all along? There has been the Education Standards Agency, which is like a smaller unit, but also part of the work has been done by departments in the ministry. And now the proposal is that now let's have a streamlined way, because teachers are very many. Teachers, you are speaking of those in pre-primary, primary, secondary, you are talking of public, but also the private sector has expanded. So teachers, their professional conduct has to be regulated. For instance, you will find there are private schools which employ unless to, I don't want to use the word dropout, it's derogatory, somebody who just completed S1 or S2, and you find he's also a teacher. So now this regulation now defines the the standards, who is supposed to be a teacher. 
who is supposed to teach the primary school, who is supposed to teach the secondary school, should it be anybody, and so forth. Even you, the journalist, there is a body which regulates the profession of journalism. So it is in that context that the education is coming up with this bill to put a framework to regulate teaching as a profession. It's not to harass teachers or to do what, but to ensure that our children, when they go to school, they are actually interacting or being taught by somebody who meets the standards. It's like when you go to hospital, I am sure you expect there should be a body somewhere which ensures that the doctor who handles you is well qualified and knows what he's doing. So there must be a body somewhere within the government that ensures that this doctor, whether he's in a private clinic or government clinic, because for you, you don't know, you just come to a clinic, but there is a system that ensures that the doctor, the nurse, the laboratory person is actually qualified and meet the standards and the right person to treat you. So similarly, we can't leave the, the teaching profession that anybody just joins. So there should be a body somewhere that says, yes, you have trained, you have qualified, you are now licensed to go and do teaching and impart knowledge in our children at different levels. So that's the import of this law and should not be misread to think that he's being brought because there is a strike. We have had strikes uh, time immemorial. It's just a coincidence that it comes at a time when we are also handling this issue of industrial action. Now, the strike by the teachers. So like I said, we didn't discuss it. That's why it's not among the points I raised. But there is a parallel process of meetings going on to address the issue and we shall address you separately on the issue of the strike. But for now, what I can say is that one, the government of Uganda has been increasing salaries of public servants, teachers inclusive. I think the last increment for teachers was 2019, not a long time ago. So the commitment of government to increase the pay of all public servants remains total, like we have said earlier on. And I had communicated much earlier that we intend to raise the pay for all civil servants, but we are doing it in a phased manner. Starting next financial year, we have substantially increased the pay for scientists. And then the non-scientists will be catered for in the subsequent years. I have made that statement before here, and I am repeating it. So it is not true for anybody to say that the intention of government is to discriminate among the civil servants. No. We only said the money available is not enough to substantially enhance the pay across the civil service. So we are starting with the scientists, including health workers and the post-primary teachers, and thereafter we shall enhance for the others. Because we have it enhanced only for teachers alone, the enhancement has also gone in the civil service for scientists, so there are also non-scientists in the civil service. So I think for the teachers to misunderstand this gesture and interpret it that they are being discriminated because they are not scientists is not correct, because the enhancement hasn't been only in the teaching profession. Even the mainstream civil service the scientists are going to earn better than the non-scientists, but in the hope that they will also be lifted. And uh, even in the past, there are times when the government has enhanced the pay of teachers without looking at the others, like police officers, like the army, like uh, councillors' districts. 
but they have not striked because we have enhanced the pay of the teachers. So I think the strike is unjustified because there was even a deliberate decision of government to enhance for science. Science hadn't striked to say increase our pay, but in the wisdom of government we said let's start with the scientists and there is a justification which we gave earlier on, but also along the way we shall enhance for the others. So yes, the engagements are on, but my appeal to the teachers is that they should go back to class and teach and wait for the enhancement to come. Because we have just passed the budget, it has just been read to the country. We cannot repeat the process of reading the budget again because we are going to effect it first July. And then we can engage because the commitment is there to see that not only teachers but all the other civil servants earn better than where we are. So our appeal is that the non-science teachers should be patient should know that the government has the good will and be back to class and teach as we continue to enhance the rest of the civil service. And that appeal goes to all civil servants across government. There are people even who earn worse than the teachers. Than the teachers. There are people who basically volunteer in the government like say if you look at the local councillors at level one, level two, level three, district councillors, they basically don't earn anything. They get some portrait sitting allowance, which is not enough to even buy them lunch before they reach home. But they serve, and all of us are serving. So we call for patience, we call for understanding, Yes, we are all concerned that the public servants should earn better as the resource envelope improves. But in any case, we have already expressed our commitment that we are incre increasing the pay in a phased manner. In a phased manner. But the engagements are on. Once we have concluded discussions, we shall come back here and tell you the final position of government. But our appeal is that the teachers should get back to class as we handle the, the pay of the remaining teachers and the other remaining public servants.